Hi everybody, we have hit that magical part um, of our video lectures where this is the last lecture in the class. This is the use of the decision making model that we've spoke about this entire class. We're going to go over some specific applications of it in some ways that it's been looked upon um, and how you can use it as you improve and grow in your role. Um, I think that this is important content, but it's also good to see that we are close and near to the, near to the very end of the work that we're doing. So this chapter really exists to help you walk through the decision-making model that the book has talked about this entire semester. The key is to now take this and relate it to two different things. Um, it really helps you work, will relate to what classroom management looks like and how we can help foster the emotional and social development of students. Um, you're going to have a lot of questions on this on your next exam, multiple choice form, of course. Um, but, you know, it'll be good for us to look at this. So, the decision-making model itself is what we talked about throughout this entire course. It is a four-step process for making choices about dealing with different types of guidance issues. If I were to give you a scenario, I would hope you could look at that scenario and say which of the choices and which of the processes we're specifically looking at. So, one of the most important things is that you have to have a good knowledge base on child guidance. So think about what we spoke about throughout this class, these ideas of a permissive parent, an authoritarian parent, an authoritative parent. But that will help you use this model much more effectively. You need to understand what children are like at different ages. If you can understand what a child is like at every single different age that you're going to be encountering them, it's only going to make you a stronger and better teacher, and it's going to help you understand the role of child guidance much better. So, Adults have to be able to answer these questions, and this is what you learn in early childhood education. You know, you have to be able to sit, see the difficulties that a three-year-old might have in waiting in line. You have to say, you know, can, a, can an adult tell a six-month-old infant to stop? Um, is a child going to pick up when their father curses? So that's all important things that need to come into mind, and you'll learn about that in your child development classes, most likely later on in your program. So what could happen if somebody witnessed a drive-by sh shooting? Um, do kindergarten children understand emotions? And if you've learned one thing about this class, it's the kindergarten teachers really have a tough job because they're left with the excess baggage that the parents have given them. So some kindergarten children can understand emotions and manage them, but some kindergarten children can't. Some kids aren't going to outgrow aggression, and some, are going, some, are, some children that are older who've had permissive parents they're going to get away with things in school because they've got away with them at home all the time. So my advice is that, you know, everybody should have skills. You should be able to manage the layout of the classroom, the curriculum activities in, 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 the, in, in, in the materials. If you can't, you don't belong in this profession. I, I truly, honestly believe, and remember, I've been an administrator that's worked with young kids and, and older kids. At this age that all of you are going to school for, if you can't manage the layout of, a, of the classroom, if you don't understand the curriculum, and, and you don't know what are appropriate materials, you have no business in this profession. This is what my job as an administrator is. It's to help you with child guidance, bullying, stress, and to help you understand how to convey that to children. I think this is much, 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 much more of what a principal should be doing than this. If you enter a classroom and you graduate, you should know how to do all this stuff. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you, and you didn't get the training you, you needed from a pre-service program. So you have to make sure that you, know, that you have genuine respect for children and their families. You as an adult have the power to make decisions and, and also react when a child doesn't want to do the decisions that you're asking them to make. So please try to keep that in mind and, and understand that as well. So being eclectic is knowing that there is not just one strategy for everybody, um, for every child. You need to make modifications, you need to make adaptations, you need to make adjustments. And by doing so, it's going to help you be much more effective um, in, in, in using different strategies and different theories when and where possible. So different children uh, call for a different approach. There are different approaches in designing a classroom management plan. Please remember why I'm having you do what I'm having you do in this class. This is because of the certification. 
If you take one thing away from this, it's the fact that you know you might want to be a kindergarten teacher with everything and every being in, in, in your body. This isn't the way this works in the state of Pennsylvania or Ohio anymore. Our certification is from birth to grade four. I myself worked much better with the older students. I loved third and fourth graders. It was the best part of my job. I wasn't necessarily the best at working with preschoolers and kindergartners. I didn't have the, the, the good, really, you know, ability to relate to them. I knew the curriculum, but I couldn't relate to them. So you have to know, since you did two different management plans, which one is going to work best with which age and why. And I think that's a big concept and a big idea in this class. So if you get one takeaway message from this class, social and, and emotional development for children require different approaches in all cases. What works for one kid is not going to work for all others. And if you take one thing away from this course, um, that's going to be one of, the, one of the big takeaway messages that you need to have. So the steps in the process, the model that you should be using, um, it's really the notion of observing, deciding, taking action, and reflecting. We're going to look at this model on your last discussion board because it's going to take technical applications of the model, but I do want to talk about a few other things that you need to know um, really as, as we go into some of the other topics in this class. Um, in the early childhood ages, you're everything to your children. You're their parent, you're their teacher, you're their friend, and you are their guidance counselor. You need to have a strong guidance plan. You need to know ways that you're going to interact and, and help other kids grow and be successful and understand. So a guidance plan is a written document based on the process of how you help kids make decisions and how you'll support a child. In my ideal world, a guidance plan goes hand in hand with a classroom management plan. You need to look at the context and the children you're working with. When you student teach and you do field, you're going to be doing it in different socioeconomic backgrounds. And I want you to see multiple backgrounds and multiple approaches. It's only going to make you stronger. So at some point in your career, you're going to have to refer a child for help. It's not a bad thing. It's nothing wrong with admitting you can't handle problems, but you have to make you have to make sure that the right supports are in place. Um, I'm going to go over each of the different you know, type of supports, and I think this is important for you to note. When you go outside, you go outside for child abuse and neglect, special ed services, problem behaviors beyond the expertise of the teacher, medical issues, family challenges, and continued behavior. So child abuse and, and neglect, um, each state has different laws that are, you know, that are set. This is the administrator in me telling you this. Teachers are mandated reporters, but I do not encourage you to do it on your own. If you go and you report somebody for child abuse on your own, and in our context, in, in, <laughs> in, in this century, you are a moron. You are a complete and total moron, because if you get something wrong and you get a parent in trouble, you might end up sued, and that is bad. If that happens, you need to involve as many professionals in child abuse cases as possible um, that can be the right support. I tell all of my teachers, you go to a principal when you have to, if it, if it involves child abuse. Um, but involve as many professionals as you can, talk to the guidance counselor, and make sure that you document everything, but you do it in a confidential manner. Of course, special education services you're going to deal with, you're going to face, once again, you know, we're in an era where more and more children are having IEPs. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, that can help everybody as well. So, you know, you need to involve other people in these decisions, but don't make any of these major decisions unless you're certified in special education. So, there are going to be areas. Um, it, there, there, there are going to be areas where you, a situation is new that you don't know how to encounter. This is when you really need to talk to somebody who's a veteran teacher or an administrator. If you know that you need to ask for help, ask for help, especially if you have an administrator with experience. Um, when a teacher tries to handle everything themselves and they screw up, I view that as narcissism more than anything else because that's a teacher that thinks they know everything um, and that can create a problem and a challenge as well. So. 
Some children um, have medical issues, and the book talks about waiting children basically saying for every student with an IEP, this counts as three and a half people in your classroom. Um, that's not the case in Pennsylvania. Teachers need to work with not only special ed teachers, but also school medical personnel to determine if there's support that's there um, and if the support is available as well. So bingo, big idea here. Let me scream this at the top of my lungs to you because no matter what I say, there are going to be some people that are not going to get this. You have zero control on what goes on in the home. None. You have no control over it. You can help parents intellectually. You can give them the resources in order for them to understand math, for them to understand reading subject areas, but you cannot save every child. The second you realize this, the easier your job will get. This is a harsh reality because we're in a human scenario, in a human field, but keep this in mind. It will make your job easier and it will make more sense to you. You have zero control over what goes over in the home emotionally and socially. If you've done everything and the behavior continues, approach the principal. Principals make double the money you make. This is why they make double the money that you make. It's their job to help with behavior. As a principal, I got annoyed if a teacher would come to me day one and say this is a problem and they didn't try anything. But if it's day two, day three, I'm here to help. That's why I make the big bucks and you don't as teachers. A good principal understands that, that teachers need support and they need help. So. This class, I hope you got a lot from it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there was a great foundation with it. Um, if you look at the scenarios in the book, that's going to help you prepare for the test. If there's anything else that I can do in the future to help you, please let me know. I love BC3. I'm very fortunate to have been lucky to have worked at this institution for such a long time. And if there's anything else I can do to help, I certainly would love to do it. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed the class.